we can go right ahead and talk about Team USA and their final roster for the 2024 Paris Olympics. So I'll just rattle off all the names that have been confirmed. So they got Steph Curry, they got LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, Joel Embiid, Devin Booker, Tyrese Halliburton, Anthony Edwards, Drew Holiday, Bam Adebayo, and Anthony Davis. So these are the 11 players on the roster that have been confirmed as of right now. Obviously, this roster could, um, could be changed. As the NBA playoffs progress, there's no telling if any of these players, unfortunately, get injured. And if they get injured, that might ruin their chances of being able to play 100% in the Olympics. And, like, obviously, this is going to be... This will be a huge problem because Joel Embiid, he's suffered from... In almost every single postseason game that he's been in, he's been injured. So it's really not... It's a really bad track record to keep, especially when you're as dominant as Joel Embiid is. And I have a, I feel like if... Like, there's a very high chance that it does happen when looking at every other player that was picked for Team USA. Because most of the players that were picked for Team USA, they usually... Like they tend to stay, they tend to stay very healthy, and most of the time it's like, why, why even bother with um, what's it called? Why even bother with playing in the Olympics if you're not even going to be healthy, or why even bother with playing some of the playoffs if you're not going to be healthy for the Olympics? And it's just priorities that a lot of these players like. Obviously, they have a major priority when they look at the NBA season. So that probably, and not to mention, if any of these players make a deep, deep playoff run, chances are they're less inclined to want to stay on the roster, if that makes sense. And it's really like, um, what's it called? It's really not good <laughs> for Team USA, the fact that the playoffs... Um, are happening right around at this time. And then a lot of these players are expected to go to the Olympics immediately. And it's a lost art in, um, in NBA basketball because back then, there would be no question on whether or not these NBA players were going to be on Team USA. Like, it's seen as a great honor to represent your country. And that honor, I feel like it's been sort of push to the side these recent years because a lot of these NBA players are mainly focused on their NBA career aside from being focused on the Olympics and USA basketball. And most of the time, and as this is sort of why in the recent years when the USA goes to FIBA tournaments and when USA goes to Olympic tournaments, we don't send the best players that we have. And it's really frustrating, especially as a fan, because it's like, why wouldn't you want to represent your country? It really just, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever why anyone wouldn't want to represent their country and play in the Olympics. And it's just, it really just bothers me. So there's one roster spot available for the, for the Olympics, and depending on who gets taken... No one knows entirely for sure. So the options for, the, I mean, the best option, in my opinion, is to get Kawhi Leonard. Because with the roster that I just mentioned, the only strong perimeter defender that there is on the team is Drew Holiday. And obviously, like LeBron James and Kevin Durant, they're really good perimeter defenders. Their length makes it incredibly difficult for anyone to get any kind of bucket over them as well as LeBron's strength and, like, their presence on the defense. Like, obviously, they do have defense, 
but they are on the older side of players when compared to the rest of Team USA's roster. So asking them to produce both offensively and defensively is a much more difficult task. Like this is LeBron, but this wasn't a My- this isn't Miami Heat LeBron. This isn't the same LeBron that was on Team USA previously that was dominant on both ends of the floor. It could play both ends of the floor at a high rate 40 minutes in a game because that's essentially what LeBron was for Team USA, and that's what a lot of those players were in 2012 and 2008. But regardless, it's it's really like, um, it's a really difficult task for to rely on those two players on the defensive side of the ball. And Drew Holiday being the only perimeter defender, like competent perimeter defender, and, you know... I will say, Anthony Edwards, he is a competent perimeter defender, but it's not like he's really known for that defense. Like, they need that two-way player on the team, and it really feels like they have... I mean, they have it at the center, no doubt about it. They do have it at the center with Anthony Davis and Joel Embiid. I mean, more so Anthony Davis than Joel Embiid on the defensive side of the ball. Also with Bam Adebayo, who is another great defensive presence for... uh, Team USA, as well as being a good perimeter defender as well. But they need that hybrid player. So I feel like Kawhi Leonard is by far the best available option for Team USA. The problem is his knee. Because I said in a previous podcast that his knee has experienced some kind of swelling, and it's going to be questionable on whether or not he'll be able to play at 100% once the postseason arrives, which is in a few, which is after the play-in tournament. And with all that in mind, along with the fact that Kawhi Leonard load manages and like is the catalyst for load managing, it's unclear whether or not he even wants to be on Team USA's roster. So other options that are there for Kawhi, that in, instead of Kawhi Leonard are, in my opinion, I think Paulo Banchero would be a very good pick for Team USA because he is that um, he does fill in that forward role of being able to score while at the same time being able to defend. Since he's relative, since he's very young in the league as well, this also gives um, this also gives them more of an incentive because it's like you know he's young, so he'll be able to play a lot more minutes than you would LeBron or when you would KD. Even though I fully expect LeBron and KD to to play a lot of minutes since they are going to be in the starting lineup. Now, another mm, excuse me. Another player that could fit that role, like for that hybrid defender for Team USA, is Paul George, who is Kawhi Leonard's other teammate. And Paul George, he he had a little bit of an he had a really, really bad leg injury when he was playing with Team USA. So this would be a pretty good bounce back story for him. Like, you know, getting injured when he was on Team USA and then coming back to Team USA to win another Olympic, to win an Olympic gold medal. Jesus, my English is just horrible today. For the United States, that would be a really good comeback story that I would really like to see. And another option and another name that was being thrown around was Jalen Brunson. So I don't really, while I am a big fan of Jalen Brunson, big fan of New York, um, sports in general, I don't really think that's a good fit. Like Jalen Brunson is an undersized guard who provides nothing relative, who pro- doesn't provide much on the defensive side of the ball, and again, he's also incredibly undersized when compared to the rest of the players that are on the roster. So I don't really think that's a worthy inclusion to bring him because it's just okay, you're adding more offense, but where's the defense? And I really think that, like, defense is going to be something that Team USA desperately, desperately needs. Now, looking at the the rest of the... Looking at the rest of the players that are available, Kyrie Irving was also a name that uh, that popped up recently in these, you know, who's going to be on Team USA, who's going to fill that role in, and with... With him being available to for Team USA since he was on the roster before, this could be 
again, it's the same story that I said where it's like they need the defense. And while he has played with Kevin Durant on Team USA before, and he has won with Kevin Durant on Team USA before, I don't think that's a worthy inclusion simply because of the lack of defense. And he's a great scorer, great player, definitely one of, definitely can cook basically anyone that's guarding him. But again, defense, like it's desperately needed, and it's going to, sh it could show in this um, in this Olympic tournament, but. Regardless, those are, let's see, do, is there, are there any other players that could potentially replace um, or fill in that 12th spot? Not entirely sure, but not off the top of my head. I can't really think of any other player that would fill in that role better than Kawhi Leonard or Paul George. And I feel like they, Team USA should work on getting either of those two. Now... About Team USA, because I mentioned this before, the playoffs are rolling and like they're about to start. And if one of these players makes a deep run, then chances are they're not going to want to play for the Olympic team because like their team is still worried about the playoffs and they're also like and not to mention coming off of playing in an intense series and then expecting to go overseas to play basketball again and play for your country it's a lot of these players think it's a relatively difficult task and a lot of and that's also a lot more pressure that needs to be added that's going to be added on to them so if any of these players um, make a deep playoff run, we might see some of them decommit from Team USA. But I don't think that's really going to happen this time, simply because this is like this is supposed to be the Redeem Team 2.0. This is supposed to be the um, because with how with our embarrassing loss in the FIBA tournament and with the other embarrassing losses that Team USA has had in basketball tournaments. We need to assert. We need to reassert the dominance again because, uh, like again, I just said before, they just keep sending like the the B team or the C team instead of sending the A team, and that's something that and we gotta send the A team at some point. But that's basically all I have for Team USA. But with that, we are out of time for this first segment, second segment, excuse me. So I will be going ahead and go into the. For, I will go ahead into the third segment. Why is my English so bad today? I'll go ahead into the third segment where I talk about the play-in games that are going down tonight and my predictions for this game, as well as bring up something that I didn't mention in the previous podcast, which I completely overlooked. So I will be right back after this short break. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSMC College Football Podcast, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, GSMC Basketball Podcast, and so many more. Check it out for yourself. GSMC Sports Network, now available on YouTube absolutely free. Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now. 